direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access. It's Foxborough Central, and here's your host, Bob Hickey. And welcome to another episode of Foxborough Central. I am Bob Hickey, your host. So pleased you could take a little bit of time to join me and my guests as we talk about the people, events, and organizations that make Foxborough the gem of Norfolk County. Maybe a little bit south, outside of Foxborough, but still great to know. Bill Gavea. Bill? Thank you, Bob. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you appear, and I'm honored to have you appear on our program. Uh, for those of you who do not know Mr. Gavea, he is an esteemed columnist of many, many years with the Sun Chronicle. Uh, but more than that, he's also a community volunteer and elected public official. You are currently the moderator, town moderator in Norton. I am. And uh, in that capacity, you run the town meeting. You also, uh, in Foxborough, we have an advisory committee. I'm right. sure there's some financial committee or financial advisory committee in Norton that's the equivalent. Yes, we have a, a finance committee, which pretty much is the equivalent of your advisory committee. And I appoint all 11 members of that. I served on that committee for 15 years, so I kind of have an idea of uh, what it takes to serve on it. So that and running town meeting, it's a nice job. I only work four or five nights a year. It, it works out really well. So it's, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to retire in the benefits from that <laughs> nice job. Yeah, actually, I, I, I have... I get no salary and I have no expenses, so it it's, uh, you know puts me in another tax bracket. Well, there you go. Uh, and and for folks in on Foxborough Central, you uh, know that I occasionally have guests because I'm fascinated by them, and this is one of those opportunities for me to just have a sit down chat. Of course, inviting you into my little sit down chat, but uh, because I have been long a fan of Mr. Gobeas and his uh, column writing. For those of you who may not be completely familiar with all that I do. I also write a column for the local newspaper, the Foxborough Reporter. Um, and I'm always trying to get better myself, and I'm trying to learn, and I listen to people, and I, I critically read my own material to see where I can improve you know, grammar, train of thought, silly ideas, whatever. And I see polished people write columns and, and uh, I just am always respectful and amazed at the different ideas they get, and and I just I, I just am curious to know uh, the breadth of your experience that brought you to have all of this insider knowledge, your your uh, your your ideas, and and just where you're coming from. And then as we're talking here before, I then find out he's a former selectman, and I then find out he also served on his local cable access group. So. We've got a, a minefield of, of material here. Where do we start? Well, you know, it, when, you get, when you get old, uh, I guess you've got, you know, experience as you go along. But I, I, I've always loved, you know, local politics. I, um, it, it, it's kind of a funny story. I won't bore you with the whole thing. But when I was in high school, I graduated from Norton High in 1974. We held a mock town meeting as part of a government day. And I played the role of the chairman of the finance committee. And our then town moderator, Mr. Joseph Yell, came in and ran the meeting for us. And uh, I guess I must have impressed him. And the voting age had just turned 18. And uh, a couple days later, I was called down to the principal's office. I was a senior in high school. And I, it, it was not a path I was totally unfamiliar with. But when I, when I <laughs> went down there, uh, Mr. Yell, the moderator, was there. And with our superintendent, he said, how would you like to possibly be a member of the town finance committee? And I was, I was probably the first member who ever said, okay, just let me go ask my mother. Uh, <laughs> and, and I ended up joining. I was the youngest. At 18 years, two months, I was the youngest town official in history at that time anyway. And I spent uh, a total in two different terms of about 15 years on the finance committee. Uh, I ran for selectman at the age of 23 mm -hmm. uh, and lost. And Now let's, let's talk about that. So when you ran for selectman at the age of 23, and I also ran for selectman and won, and I also was fired, so it, yep. it works both ways. When you ran at the age of 23, why did you run? What was your motivation? Because frankly, just probably just graduating college perhaps, and uh, whole life ahead of you, community service is not exactly the, the clarion call for most kids. Well, you know, I had dreams of going to college. I never had the opportunity. It was, you know, family situations mm -hmm. and the things the way they were. So, you know, high school was going to be about as far as I, I was going to be able to go. And so now I found myself in town, and I'm, I'm living there, and, and I got involved, and I wanted to do better. And, and Norton, uh, people may think that 
Foxborough politics have been crazy for you know the last few years, but trust me, Norton had the market cornered on crazy politics back in the uh, in the 70s and 80s, and um, I wanted to make a difference, so I ran. I was a you know I was a 20, 23 year old kid, and there were five people running. I finished third. I lost by 80 votes. It was a really close vote, and there were a big turnout because it was a, a Prop two and a half related mm. issue going on, and uh, and then I eventually two years later I got elected. Well, know. I was just going to say at the age of twenty three, your first time out, where you probably had uh, little name recognition, even though you were <coughs> on the was it the financial the finance committee? Okay, uh, where you were on the fine. Uh, we'll call it the FinCom. There you go. There you go. I'm trying to think because we have the ad called the FinCom. So you're on the FinCom, uh, but you probably had a lot of campaign to do and still to come in third out of five. That's a pretty impressive showing for a, a political newbie. Yeah, it was pretty good for, you know, at that point I think I had, you know, I had just had one child and so my campaign consisted of putting up some homemade signs and knocking on, you know, as many doors as I could. So that, that you know, that gets you a taste of it. And I grew up, you know, uh, passing out flyers for different, you know, politicians who mm -hmm. ran. You know, you, you did it mostly because you got food at the end, you know, but it, 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 it was, <laughs> It still got you interested, and, and eventually I got elected three times, and then the last time that I, I lost, I lost in 1998, um, you know, that's when I really became a, a columnist, mm -hmm. you know. There's an old saying, those who can't do right, but I don't think that's quite accurate. I think it's just, you know, at that point, it was, it was more fun for me to just comment on things and to, and to make a difference, because as you know, you're a column. You, you don't really write a column. It's, it's not my full-time job. I sell stainless steel as my full-time job. That's how I put food on the table. But you, you really don't write a column unless you have a desire and an ability to make a difference. You know, if you don't feel like you're making a difference, what's the point? You know, you know that's an excellent uh, point, because people do say, why do I write a column? Why do you write a column? And, and it has to be, at least for me, and, and, and sounds so similar, you still have something to give. And when I lost uh, my re-election campaign a bid to be uh, selected for a third term, um, I took the step back and, and all good, you know, you should always let the new person come in and, and do their thing and make their way. Uh, but when I was asked to lend my voice, I thought, you know, it, it is a good opportunity to participate and to sure. still be part of the process. Um, and I suppose it's one of those opportunities that uh, blends a little bit of capitalism because if nobody wants to hear what we have to say, then the newspaper at any time is welcome to say, well, thank you, but we'll do something else. And uh, I, I think we're considered stringers or, or however you want to call it, but yep. uh, uh, the column is completely at will from the newspaper to put in. They never have to put one of mine in, I guarantee you. I don't know what kind of contract you have, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm always grateful for the opportunity to write and grateful for that they are actually putting it in uh, and that I get paid a little bit of money. But uh, for the most part, uh, it is a community involvement type of operation, so. Sure, I, you know, I tell everybody, believe me, you know, with no offense to my newspaper or to my editors, I, I really don't do it for the money. Um, because there's not enough involved to really make it all that, all that much. It, uh, I tell my wife all the time it's cheaper than a psychiatrist, uh, so it, 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 it helps me, and I'd like to think it helps you know, the, the cities and towns I write about. But uh, it, it's, you know, I started in 1998, I, I, I wrote for the Norton, uh, Norton, I'm sorry, the Norton Mirror, which is now uh, defunct, it just closed about six months ago mm. or so. And from that, I started writing a column a week there. Then I also started writing a column a week in the Mansfield News at the same time. And then also for the Easton Journal, because the editor was the same. Donna Whitehead is a friend of mine. And I, so I wrote for all three of those. And then about seven years ago, I started writing for the Sun Chronicle. And, and that's what and, I do. And there we go. So uh, with the, uh, with, I didn't realize you had written columns for different, and there were different columns for each newspaper? Yes. You didn't just write one and syndicate it out. Now, occasionally, if there was one that you know that might apply, then they'd run both and same, and I'd only do two. But generally, I wrote three a week for the three different towns. Which is very impressive when you think about the number of local issues. And they say all politics is local, and for a local community newspaper, it is important that you're not writing about Binghamton right. or or Bangor because you know, frankly, we drive through it on the interstate, but it doesn't really have a lot of bearing on what we do here in Foxborough, what you do in Norton, or anywhere else in the Attleboro readership. So to have that local knowledge, that's got to take a little bit of research also and a little bit of understanding and open communication and, and paying attention. 
I know how tough it is here in just Foxborough and my limited role as a, as a local columnist to really know what the different points of view are in order to write intelligently. And I think that's an interesting piece of any writer is, you know, it, it's one thing just to blather, but it's a whole another thing to write something that's moving and has meaning and is factually accurate. And yours are. You're, I, I, re, I feel as though I know more about Rehoboth Town to politics <laughs> than <laughs> many people perhaps in Rehoboth because I read your work and I, I, I can feel the different persuasions or, or, or political bodies working against each other and the old, the new, the, the young yep. ones coming in and the old political machine and, and then to do that in Easton and Norton, that's, that's a uh, pretty, pretty tricky piece of work there. That's nice. Well, it, it, it's a, a combination of things. Num number one, having, I, I mean, I've, I've been in local politics now for 40 years. So you sort of learn to pick up because at, at the base of things, local politics are all the same. They're, I mean, every community is unique in how they attack them, how they run them, how they use them. But in the end, they're, with some variations, they're all the same. So I've been through the political battles. I've been through the, oh, we have a town referendum question on the ballot. Um, I understand how, I understand the mindset of mm -hmm. how local officials think. I understand the problems they have and the constraints they have. So a lot of it is, is being able to, to see a situation and, and understand that. And then I've been around a while, so I've, I've talked to you know, different officials. I know, you know, I don't know every board member, I don't know every selectman in each town that, that I write about, but I, you know, I know some of them. I usually know at least one on, on each board. Um, I, you know, people think that I would probably spend you know, days going over exhaustive research. Really, I don't. I, 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 to be honest with you, I, I, I read the papers. I read a lot of newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, I talk to people. Um, people call me and email me a lot. You know, when you're a columnist, there's always people who are willing to yep. volunteer the next really hot story and tell you information that they don't want you to use from them, but they'd really like you to know. And you have to pick through that and understand what's, you know, what's uh, right and what may be just a, a little bit of an overheated opinion. And, and you put all that through and, and you, you, know, you write about it. I'm, I'm lucky that, you know, with the Sun Chronicle, I have a, a variety. There's eight or nine communities that I can pick up to write about on a given day. And they, they afford me the, you know, they, nobody tells me what to write. I just write about whatever I, I feel like that day. And, and it's, uh, it, it's nice. I appreciate that they give me the opportunity. And it, it's, it's not brain surgery. It's, it's pretty simple. When you reduce it to uh, what you think is going on that's right, what you think that's going on is wrong, and you, you just, you know, you write your opinion. I don't, I don't claim to always be right. I just claim to always think I am. You know, and <laughs> if I didn't think I was, why would I write it? You know. So I think that's an important piece. Also, is that everything that everything that I write about, I do believe in what I'm writing about. Right. I'm not. I'm not uh, trying to stir the pot just for the sake of spinning the pot. It, it is truly because I think there's either an injustice or something that people need to know or or just an opportunity to expand a, a, a bit of knowledge. And, and so, you know, it's interesting also in that your editor doesn't tell you what to write or do they ever give you suggestions or say, hey, Bill, we've got this huge election coming up. Do you think maybe you could toss us 800 words on this topic? Yeah, I, I mean, they, you know, they will on occasion. And really, it doesn't happen all that often, but they'll say, hey, um, you know, for instance, when the, uh, and it's not really so much local, but when the anniversary of President Kennedy's death was coming up, my editor said, hey, you know, it'd be nice to have a uh, kid who grew up Catholic in a local town here write a column about, you know, the effect of President Kennedy. And I said, great idea. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's great. I'll do it. But, you know, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, when there's politics going on in pick a town or, you know, in Foxborough, they, they call up Gouverre and they say, hey, you know, we want something this week on Foxborough and make it good. And that doesn't happen. It just it doesn't happen. Good, bad, or indifferent, whatever is under my name is what I decided to write about. So you can blame the paper if you want, but you're better <laughs> off blaming me because I'm, I'm the one that did it. Uh, well, a lot of credit to the newspapers also because I know in here in Foxborough is a great example. Uh, when I write, the newspaper doesn't necessarily agree with my opinion. Sure. But the newspaper, to their credit, is willing to put me in the newspaper. And, it, and it's always a, a big chuckle, I think, when 
I'm writing something that I know is probably not something that the, <laughs> that the editorial staff of the Sun Chronicle, who owns the, right. the, the Fox Reporter, is probably thinking, wow, Hickey really hit it on the head. I don't think they think that very often, but tremendous credit to them for putting it in. And, you know, freedom of the press and the importance of a local press and the importance of having uh, divergent viewpoints, uh, I suppose, could be all wrapped up in the fact that we have columns in there. Uh, you seem like a fairly uh, perhaps socially liberal, uh, fiscally conservative type of uh, person, at least from my reader uh, standpoint, <coughs> and that doesn't always sit well with everybody, and it's always fun to listen to viewers say, oh, I can't believe so and so, they're always doing this, they're always going this way. Well, no, if they were always going this way or that way, then they wouldn't put the other side in the newspaper. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's funny, and, and I don't know how you feel about it, but I think you'd probably agree. When you, when you write a column, you know, a, a column every week, or, or in my case, twice a week, you, uh, it, it's very personal. It becomes a, a, a personal conversation with the mm -hmm. reader. You don't know who's reading it. You know, you don't know, if, if anybody's reading it, you know, to, to some point, but you, it's still, you care about it. You, you want to get a point across. You try to do it in a way that doesn't turn people off. Um, I mean, you can come in all indignant and shock and awe and, and all this stuff, and, but if you do it all the time, nobody listens to you. It, it's, you know, it's not gonna matter. So you, you not only have to get your point across, but you have to be relevant. You have to, you know, you, you have to have a conversation. And, and if you don't have a conversation, then all you are is a screeching voice, and they go, oh, he's just doing the same thing again, and they toss the paper. And people also know that you're being disingenuous. And, sure. And, and that also can only play for so long until people turn you off. So that's the next one. And I'm, by the way, I'm speaking with Bill Gobea, who, again, this is, guy, this is going to be a fireside chat, and I'm so glad that you're joining us. Uh, Bill Gobea, who's a columnist with the Sun Chronicle. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Bill and maybe give him one of those insider scoops on something important, uh, you can always email them directly at an inside look at AOL.com. Right. An inside look at AOL.com. Now, in addition to your work as a columnist, you are the moderator of the town meeting, which uh, uh, is similar to our town meetings, I'm yes. sure, in that there's a lot of articles, some education. How do you feel participation is in the town of Norton, uh, given that you have a, a a columnist viewpoint of the surrounding towns. Is it equal, stronger, less than strong? Is it? Participation at town meeting is, a, is a, a strange and wonderful thing. In Norton, we have a zero quorum. So we don't, we don't have to have. So whoever shows up, yeah, if, they're if, making the decisions. If one person shows up, they can vote on the $48 million budget. Um, I was opposed to that when it was brought up many years ago. I thought it was a terrible idea. And I was 100% wrong. It, it turned out to be a great idea. Um, it, there is no better way to get people to turn out than to play on their distrust of what other people may do. <laughs> and and th just the fact that, you know, 10 people could show up and double the school budget is enough to make people come out on nights that they might not otherwise mm -hmm. come out. Now, some would say that's, that's an awful thing to play on, but all's fair in love and government. It, that's it, right. It, you, you've got to do what you've got to do. I'm probably one of the few town moderators who believes that in towns the size of Norton and Foxborough, town meeting is not a good idea. Mm. I, I would be in favor of uh, abolishing my job and abolishing town meeting in my, in my town. I think that we've just outgrown it. You know, the, the biggest complaint you always hear is, oh, we just can't get enough people to town meeting. We only got 100 or 200 or 300 people. If only we could get more, you know, the, but we don't understand the system's not working. Well, I've run town meetings in Norton where we had big issues, where we had over 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. We had to put them in five different rooms, two different buildings. We had to spend a fortune on audio and visual, and the discussion was basically almost impossible because you just had too many people. Sure. So with town meeting, we say, we complain when we don't get enough people, and then when we do get enough people to be representative, they can't all talk, they can't all ask questions, and we don't know what to do with them. So you know, town meeting is a system that was wonderful in its day, but you know, when you have 10, 11, 12,000 registered voters, it's just not a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just not a good idea. And, and tonight in Norton, I don't know what we'll have. We'll probably have, you know, three or 400 uh, registered voters turn out and we'll 
we'll probably go through pretty quickly, knowing that there's a Bruins playoff game on. <laughs> and, um, you know, we get it done. Town meeting works, but I, I just don't think it's, it, it's, it's a system that we should outgrow it and we should go to some type of town council town slash council. town manager system that, that, you know, when people move in from other places and they ask me, what do I have to do if I want to get this bylaw changed? And I tell them, well, you've got to write this article down. You've got to put, turn it in. Then you've got to show up in a gym with about 400 people on a Monday night, and you've got to spend a few hours there until we get to your article. And then you've got to move it, and you've got to stand up in front of all these people and on cable TV, and you've got to talk about it. And they, they look at me like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I just can't send this to somebody? Yeah. Plus, you have to bring 50 of your friends to ensure passage. Yeah. That's one of the, that's one of the great things. You know, it, it, if you bring a lot of friends to pass your article, then you know, you're accused of stacking the meeting. If the police and fire on a contract year bring all, then it's stacking the meeting. But isn't getting more people to vote for Absolutely. what you want the whole idea? Absolutely. So, so if, if you're on the winning end of it, 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 it then people say you stack the meeting. Uh, on the other side, they think it's a, it's a great exercise in total democracy. Absolutely. We, we, the, so. the people spoke, the, the power of the people, everybody came out to vote because they feel passionately about something. Absolutely. Yep. All yep. depends on how you're looking at something. Yep, that's what it's supposed to be. We, we argue all the time, and, and I think town meetings should not be televised live on cable access. I think it's like the NFL. They are not here in Foxborough. Yeah, but in Norton they are, hmm. and, and I, I feel they shouldn't be. It's like the NFL blackout rule. You know, I, I mean, it, it discourages people from coming because they can watch it and, you know, and come out. But. Now, do you ever get a, a button topic where there's lengthy discussions, people showing up in their pajamas and whatnot halfway through the meeting where they're not, they want to be heard? Sure, sure. We, when we had a, an override vote for a, our school, um, we had people coming in and expecting they could just come in, vote, and go home. <laughs> and they didn't understand that they, in order to vote, they had to sit and wait until the, the uh, article came up. And there were very angry people telling the moderator they did not understand this and why couldn't they just vote and, and leave? And it's... Uh, it's it's interesting. Town town government is a is a strange and wonderful process. And, it is. and I love town meeting. I grew up in town meeting. I, I think it's it, it, it's it's a wonderful wonderful institution. But honestly, I really think it's seen its day. It's an interesting perspective. I'm I'm a huge fan of town meeting, and I uh, I, I love having the ability to, as you say, stack. I I, I really I think that keeps the entire local government. Uh, system, whatever you want to call the system, uh, as, a, as a good check and balance because no matter how far astray our elected who, uh, officials who may be doing absolutely what they believe to be the right thing and our mm -hmm. paid officials who may be doing absolutely what they believe to be the right thing, there's always that opportunity for the common man to come out and say, well, we either support this idea or you guys are full of beans and we're going to put the brakes on. So an interesting discussion. I'd love to talk about that. That's a whole other topic. It is. That's a whole other program. It is. So in addition to your work as town moderator and in addition to the real job, and I also have a real job, so understand absolutely where you come from in that, you uh, also have a blog. You, you do an online, you have a, you have a you're, you're very prolific. <laughs> and I am, this is part of my, I said at the beginning I was amazed, and I, I really am. I have so much respect for somebody who has the ability not only to create the time, because we're all very busy, yeah. but to use that time and to funnel it into words that have meaning. And so you also have a blog site that you host, do you not? I do. Uh, probably about 90% of it, to be honest, is just putting up columns that I've written in the Sun Chronicle mm -hmm. and then commenting on them. Every once in a while I'll throw something else in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I did a cable TV show in town for about seven years. I have the, I have the blog, uh, that again, is, is, is mostly, you know, recycled columns, but I try to put columns up that, you know, would be interesting to people that I, you know, that I know, mm -hmm. uh, because it's, you know, it's hard when, when I write what I write, I write a column about Foxborough and frankly, most of the people in Seekonk or, you know, Attleboro or, uh, Rehoboth don't really care about that. Sure. And then when I write about them, people in Foxborough, Mansfield, Norton, they don't really care about them. Um, so, you know, I try to balance it around and, and move it around and, and be interesting because you never, you know, I, and then sometimes I write about family. When I write about family or, or some just general topic, then you hope that you get more of an interest. But uh, yeah, I, managing time is always a, an interesting thing. I, you know, I have, I have in my mind the two deadlines each 
you know, week when I have to have the Sun Chronicle stuff ready, and so I'm constantly making time. Every time you make plans, you say, okay, wait a minute, I've got to write that column before <laughs> then, so I've got to get that in. You're going away on vacation, you're trying to figure out when you could send stuff in. It's, uh, it, it's a challenge, but, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm older now, I have grandchildren, so we, you know, we got them to, uh, to uh, deal with and pay attention, and they definitely come before the columns. So you, it, it, is, it is a challenge as you, as you move along to make sure that you get everything uh, done. But I've, I've you know, I, I'm opinionated. You can't really be a columnist unless you're, unless you're opinionated. Right. And, uh, you know, nobody wants to read a, a totally objective opinion column. So you've got to be. You know, that you've is got a be challenge, also, something. because you also know the people that you're writing about. You have yes. relationships, and that is also a. Uh, I don't know what it's like on a regional basis, but locally, it is something that keeps a calmness in check. I can't just go out there and, because those are going to be the same people I see in the baseball field, and the same people I see at the at the store as I get my coffee. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be true. You can't. Yep. Uh, you can't mince words or else people, again, are going to say, oh, you're being disingenuous, you're being wishy-washy. People will not be as interested. So I know that, and we're so running out of time, I apologize. No, no but uh, how do you reconcile that with the fact that you do believe in something? Because I, I read your columns, and they are very well spoken and well thought out. And you don't, Thank you. And you don't do, you don't mince words, but at the same time, you don't go out of your way to embarrass somebody. What is the what is the mix? What is the, I, you know, rather than rather than club a reader with the fact that you know I, I have one of my best one of my best friends is, uh, is for a long time is Bob Kimball who's the chairman uh, or was the chairman of, of the selectmen in Norton, mm -hmm. and I've criticized things he's done and, and I I don't I don't couch the words you know I, I mean if if you do something wrong I I say I think you did something wrong but you you don't just batter somebody you don't just stand them up and humiliate them. The better thing to do is to is to outline the facts the way they happen and let the reader draw their own conclusion as to as to what happened. And then you know you throw in your opinion. I say you know look, I think this was wrong. This was this was not the way to go about it. The mistakes that were made were here and there. Uh, but you also put in the other side that they, you know they did it because they thought this was going to happen or that was going to happen. And you let the readers draw their own conclusion. If if you put your opinion out there week after week after week, and it's not aimed at getting other people to either change or reaffirm their opinion, then my, you know, my idea, you're wasting your time. Other than saving some psychiatrist money, you're wasting your time. <laughs> so, you know, my whole, my, people say, oh, you're just trying to influence people. And I say, yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, to you know, make people understand. And I, I look at it almost as an obligation to try to, you know, because people don't have time. People are busy, their lives are going crazy. They don't have time to understand the intricacies of, of what's going on in local, you know, in local government. And sometimes local officials count on that. And so, you know, I try to explain, that's why I even call the column an inside look, because I, I know it, I've lived it, I understand it. I try to explain to them what's going on. They can think I'm a political hack and I'm just trying to, you know, go for an agenda and they can ignore me if they want, or they, it, maybe it leads them to look a little deeper. And judging by the emails that I get, you know, there's a good portion of both that, you know, uh, people are not shy about letting you know what they think. And, uh, and you're, you're I, I understand you because I wrote a column in my hometown for a long time. And, and when you write about the people that you, you know, you're dealing with and you're, you see every day, that's a, that's a, a tough thing. But I've been around that I can get away with it. Uh, people know me and now they say, <laughs> okay, you know. That's what he does, and you establish some, some credibility when you right. do it. If a new guy came in tomorrow and tried to do what you do or tried to do what I do, right from the start, they'd at least have a tough breaking in period. It'd be the who are you to say this type of thing. Yeah. Well, we all know who you are. Bill Gavea has been my guest. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, thank you for having To me. be with me on the air and for sharing uh, all about local politics, <laughs> column writing, volunteerism, and all the other good things. You should check out Bill if you don't already. Pick up your copy of The Sun Chronicle. Pay for it. Don't just wait till you go to the doctor's <laughs> reading room or the barbershop. Actually, pay for a copy of the Sun Chronicle. Check out Bill Goveo. You can also email him at an inside look at AOL.com. On behalf of all the volunteers at Foxborough Cable Access, thank you for taking a little bit of time. Have a great day, Foxborough. <laughs>